Hello everyone, it's Finit here, and today we're going to be talking about all the changes that are going to be happening to the mage class for the upcoming patch 9.1, right? Take this with a grain of salt, since it's the very first iteration of the PTR, so things are also likely to change, or can change, right? But without any further ado, let's just straight jump into the video. Alright, so we're going to be talking about all of the three specs, obviously. So we're going to be talking about Arcane first, then Fire, and then Frost. And at the end, we're going to be talking about the new legendaries that are already introduced to 9.1. So the very first change is to Arcane Blast, where the PvP multiplier goes from 1 to 1.2. Basically means Arcane Blast deals more damage in PvP. It's a good thing, I mean, how often do we actually stand still in arenas and actually cast Arcane Blast? You don't really get the chance to do that, right? So this is a good thing. Second thing for Arcane, we're gonna get a new PvP talent called Arcano Sphere. What it does, it builds up a sphere of Arcane Energy, gaining power up to 4 seconds. Upon release, the Sphere passes through any barriers, knocking enemies back and dealing up to 120% spell power times 4 arcane damage. So this is actually a really cool looking uh, talent. I think you're mainly going to be running this one as well. It's actually a really good way in order to interrupt people, knock people back, get some more distance. So this is definitely a big, big plus. I, I, did, I really did not expect them to <laughs> add new PvP talents to be fair. So that's pretty cool. So the second change is to Kleptomania. Basically, they increased the cost of your spell steal, and the other big, big change about Kleptomania now is that only Arcane can use it now. So no more Fire or Frost Mages that can just use this talent in order to immediately spell steal all of the buffs. Kind of sad to see it go, but I think it's a good thing because when you go against a mirror, it's really annoying to play against one another, both running Kleptomania, and you're just like, the one that presses Combustion first, is screwed basically. Uh, yeah, indeed, like that. Alright, so now we're going to be talking about the fire part, and I have to warn you guys, fire is getting nerfed pretty badly, and I don't really like the way how they're doing this nerf, but I understand why they're nerfing fire. Fire is actually in a really strong spot, right? I understand that it needs nerf in order to, like, get it a little bit back in tone, right? But they really went on top of a nerf, on top of another nerf, on top of another nerf. So I don't really like the way how they did it. But then again, it's the first BTR. Maybe they will revert some things when they when testing came out, right? But anyway, that's something for in the future. And let's just talk about the nerf first. First of all, Flame Strike is getting nerfed. Instead of 60% of your spell power, you're only getting 55%. So basically, Flame Strike deals less damage. I understand this nerf. Flame Strike deals a lot of damage since it's uncapped. But the issue that I have mainly with this nerf is that they're also immediately nerfing flame patch, right? They're also nerfing flame patch damage from 6% of your spell power to 5.4%. And they're just basically nerfing on top of another nerf. And since flame strike really is our only way in order to do AoE on the fire mage, I really want to see how this is going to play out with both of these nerfs being active, right? Alright, so the other change to the talents is basically to Kindling. So your Fireball, Pyroblast, Fireblast and Phoenix Flames, Critical Strike. Just the remaining cooldown of your combustion by only 1 second now. It used to be 1.5 seconds and with that it made it pretty easy. To get your combustion back in a minute to actually align it together with your patch, right? Now it's going to be a lot more difficult. I don't think Kindling was the issue with Fire. I think it was mainly about Infernal Cascade, which I'm going to be talking about later in this video as well. Yes, Infernal Cascade is getting nerfed pretty hard, actually. So, I don't understand really the nerf to Kindling. I understand the nerf to the Conduit. So, basically what they're doing with Infernal Cascade, right, is they're nerfing it by 2% on rank 1. It's kind of difficult to explain, right? As in... As you can see, they went from 9% on rank 1 to 7%. So it's basically 2% nerf. But if you stacked it correctly, then you had like... Four, you had 18% increased fire damage, which is only going to be 14% now. And it keeps going, and the nerf is getting bigger and bigger. As you can see, it goes from 2% to 2.2, to 2.4, to 2.6. And it just keeps going like that. And if you have a 2 to 6 item level at the moment... Of your conduit, you're basically going back to an item level 200 conduit. So this nerf is pretty big, since most of our damage as a fire mage is in combustion, and in Infernal Cascade really helped making us do that amount of damage. So this is why I don't really understand the nerf to Kindling, since Kindling just made it so we got combustion back faster. 
since outside of conversion we do fucking jack shit guys like let's be honest outside of conversion we barely do any damage so with these nerfs on top of another nerf again we're actually gonna get it twice so i really hope they will kind of revert to change to kindling since they're already nerfing inferno cascade pretty hard right all right so the pvp talents control burn got reworked so instead of Ignite deals its full damage 100% faster, but no longer spreads to nearby enemies unless Combustion is active. They changed it to 100% more damage while Combustion is not active. I mean, how much damage does Ignite actually do outside of a Combustion? Nothing, so this will not really impact us taking this talent, I'm pretty sure. So the next talent is Ring of Fire. It's a new talent, sounds amazing, and it looks actually pretty cool. Basically what it does, it summons a ring of fire for 8 seconds at the target location. Enemies entering the ring burns for 24% of their total health over 6 seconds. I'm not really sure how good this talent is going to be, but I do think it's actually quite nice to take for RPGs. Because RPGs is a lot more hectic and people are more going to accidentally walk into the ring, right? For arenas, I don't think it's that great because you do see quite fast what is going on and what's happening, right? So... I do like this new talent though, like I really do. But I wonder how it's gonna play out. So basically the other rework thing is World in Flames. Flame Strike reduces the cast time of the Flame Strike by 50% instead of 1.25 seconds and decreases its damage by 30% for 3 seconds. I mean, who the fuck has Flame Strikes in PvP? Who cares about this change? It's, you're not gonna pick it, so just put it to the side, you won't, right? But basically, those are the fire changes. And I hope you guys understand now that I was talking about nerf on top of a nerf on top of a nerf. Since the biggest issue with fire was just Inferno Cascade. Inferno Cascade is just way too strong. I understand this nerf, but I don't understand the kindling nerf because of it. Same thing with Flame Strike. I understand that they nerf it since we do a lot of AoE damage since it's uncapped. But they nerf Flame Strike and Flame Patch on top of each other, right? So that's just kind of a shame, but, but let's see how this play plays out and yeah, we just wait. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to be talking about the Frost part. Just like Arcane, it's not a law, it's only PvP and I'm not really that great at PvP. So please bear with me uh, since I don't really know that much about the PvP things. So the first change is to Burst of Cold. Your Frost Nova instantly resets the cooldown of your Cone of Cold and it increases its damage by 600%. This was 400%. I don't think a lot of people actually took this. This is actually great though, since it makes it more competitive, I guess, if people didn't take it yet. Since it is just press button and you do a lot of damage, right? Um, so I think that's pretty good. So the other change is to Deep Shatter. Your Frost Pulse deals 75% additional damage to frozen targets. It actually got nerfed pretty hard. It used to do 150%, but it's actually only a 75 now. So this is actually quite a big nerf. I am pretty sure that a lot of people did take this talent. Since a lot of times the enemy were froze, like are frozen, right? And with this, it just made sure that your frost will just deal way more damage, right? So yeah. So the new talents, I, I like the, all of these new talents, by the way, that they do gain in PvP. This one especially is actually really cool. It's called Ice Wall. Conjures an Ice Wall that's 30 yards long that obstructs line of sight. The wall has 40% of your max health and lasts up to 15 seconds. As you guys saw, this talent looks amazing. For some reason, I am not able to place it, but that's probably just a PTR thing. But I think this talent is actually really great. If you're like getting zerked down from a distance, you can just... Yeah, not really zerked down. If you're just getting poked so hard from a distance, you can play, just place down this wall and just be in a safe zone for your party, right? Or like you can place it in front of an ally. To make sure that they are not able to cast on your healer, right? So I do think this is a really nice talent. And I think it's an amazing one as well. And something you will probably pick as a Frostmage. And this really fits the team as a Frostmage as well. I mean, I don't I don't know if you guys play PFA. But I was always jealous of Jaina that she was able to like put down on Ice Balls. And now we can ourselves. So that's actually pretty cool, right? Alright, and then some general things. And then afterwards we're going to be talking about the legendaries. So the first general thing. I don't even know what they changed. I mean... Sure. Mirror images. It's getting changed. Creates three copies of you of you nearby for 40 seconds, which cast spells and take your enemies, right? Warrior images are active. 
Damage taken is reduced by 20%. Take the direct damage will cause one of your images to dissipate. I don't see any changes, so it's whatever. <laughs> so they did remove one talent in order to like fit in the new talents, right? They removed dampened magic. Magic damage over time effects deals 10% less damage to you. I understand why this is removed, right? Since it just made us really, yeah, more tanky against combs that were only running magic dealers, right? So I understand why it's getting nerfed, like getting removed, but I don't really took it myself a lot since we're just better options. Alright, so let's talk now about uh, upcoming legendaries that are going to be introducing in 9.1. Three of them are already in place. The only one that there's missing is Night Fae. But let's just talk about Kyrian 1 first, Harmonic Echo. Damage dealt to enemies affected by Radiant Sparks for an ability Echo to four nearby enemies for 25% of their damage dealt. So, well, I'm pretty sure what this means, right? Whenever you do damage to someone that has Radiant Spark, 25% of that damage is being dealt as AoE damage to four nearby enemies. I think it's a good one, but then again, Mage has a lot of good legendaries, and I highly doubt if you're a carry mage that you would pick this one. I don't think that's going to happen. X one though, for Necrolord, if you're an arcane Necrolord, I think this one is actually pretty good. So basically how it's called, that's Phantom. Your Fireball, Frostbolt and Arcane Blast have a chance, no idea what the chance is by the way, to grant Deadborn for 8 seconds. While in the form of a skeletal mage, the spell damage granted is increased by 1% for each enemy hit by Fireball, Frostbolt and Arcane Blast. Let's read that again. Well, in the form of a skeletal mage, the spell damage granted is increased by 1% for each enemy hit by Fireball, Frostbolt, or Arcane Blast. So now come back to the part, if you're a Necrolord Arcane Mage, you take this legendary, you do the first boss of Theater of Pain, and you're just winning. You just win the game. Since you just keep on blasting the Arcane Blast on all of the targets, it keeps getting increased by 3% every single time, right? Because you hit 3 enemies with Arcane Blast. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, etc, right? And as far as I can read it, there's no cap on it. But what if you get a proc during the spell? Does it like also add time on it? Like it all really depends as well how this legendary is going to work, right? What are the chances of getting the buff? If you get a buff, does it actually extend your current skeletal mage? But I do think this is actually a really cool legendary, especially if you're an arcane necrolord, and I think this might be a really good legendary for you to take, if you're an arcane necrolord. So, for the final one, it's for Ventir, and I actually wonder how this one works as well. Assuming Brain Freeze, a Fire Blast Charge, Clear Cast, reduces Mirror of Torment cooldown by 3 seconds. If Mirrors of Torment is dispelled, the cooldown is reduced by 45 seconds. So basically what this means, whenever you consume it, like a Brain Freeze, a Fire Blast, or a Layer Cast, cooldown of the Mirrors of Torment is getting reduced by 3 seconds every single time. So since you do get procs during this ability as well, you get like 3 of them, right? It also reduces the cooldown already by 9 seconds. So for Fire, this actually can reduce it by quite a bit since you do get Fire Blast quite often. And for the other two, it's more RNG, right? And I'm not really sure if you would really take this, since at the moment we do have already pretty good legendaries. Maybe you take this one for a Frost Mage, since as a Frost Mage, Mirror of Tormers actually makes you deal way more a single target DPS, right? So making sure that you keep getting more Mirrors of Torments to get more Brain Freeze procs might be worth it. Not entirely sure, right? Anyway, that was already the end of all of the changes to the Mage class for the 9.1 PTR so far. Like I said, it's the first iteration, so take things with a grain of salt, since things are likely, or like, they don't change, right? But things can change, it's a PTR, right? So things can still change. Anyway, if changes are being made, I will definitely make another video where I talk about them as well. And like the patch of 9.0.5, I'll make a video as well, before the patch actually li goes live, to talk about all of the actual changes that are going to be happening, and actually come into the game. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.